Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're a first time viewer, then welcome. This is a 2203X reissue, right? 100 watt JCM 800. It's in here. It's been modded by me. Uh, it actually needed the new power transformer. So I took the opportunity, um, and I put a new PT in here to implement 12 volt DC heaters using one of our little uh, auxiliary boards um, that you can use to, you know, enhance or mod your existing amp. So today's video is focusing on how to implement DC heaters, what they even are, um, and we'll take this out to the bench and through some, basically some time lapse and some explanations, I'll show you how to do it and a little bit of theory um, along the way. I'm also going to talk about this guitar, which is not mine. It's been given to me for a week to have a play with. Um, so more on this later. So let's talk about heaters for a bit. What we're looking at here is a close-in shot of a Marshall 2204 from the mid 80s. I actually think this one's 1983. It's the one I worked on quite recently. These red and black, wires around the outside here. These are the heaters, right? So what is a heater? Well, a heater, you can think of it like a tungsten wire that when you push loads of current through it, it gets really hot. It's the thing that makes your tubes glow, right? When you turn your amp on. Um, you also know that the tube won't work until it's hot, right? So what's actually happening with the heater, what it's actually doing, right? It heats up the cathode on your tube, right? So if you want to know a little bit more about how a tube kind of works, check out my video on um, the plate resistor and how that works, right? So inside your vacuum tube, you've got a cathode and an anode or a plate, right? And you need electrons to fly from the cathode to the anode for amplification to work. They only start flying once that cathode is super hot, right? Um, you've got, it's got to be boiling. You think of the electrons are boiling on the plate and sorry, boiling on the cathode, right? And once they're boiling, they can fly and they can be attracted by the positive voltage that's on the plate. So these are 12 AX7 tubes, right? As we know, and um, there's two triodes or two gain stages on each side. So you know, here's V1A here. Here's our, this is V, sorry, this is V1. This is V1A and this is V1B. So on V1A, we've got our plate, our grid and our cathode. And then on V1B, our cathode, our grid and our plate. So the same thing, but just, you know, um, looks like the inverse. And on either side of that, are the heater, heater supply. Now this red one, Right, so this is an AC, 6.3 volt AC heater supply. These pins are bridged, okay? You can see it here very clearly. And then on this side, um, just a single pin, all right? So pin one, two, three, four and five are bridged, six, seven, eight, and then nine. The reason they're bridged is because the heater wire, which is heating your tube, um, needs to go across both sides, so both triodes, right? Um, because they work in each of these triodes work somewhat independently inside your vacuum tube. So moving to one of my favourite Marshall schematics um, out there. This is the old 1959 Super Lead. This is our power transformer. Okay, so your heater supply is always coming off your power transformer. This is it here. Now. And the purpose of showing this really is to show that in traditional heater supplies, it's always grounded, all right? So it's a center tap wind. So if your heater supply off your power transformer, there'll be three wires, right? You'll have a look at it. You'll notice that two of them are probably the same color, almost always, often green, sometimes black. And then the center tap, which is this middle one, will be, you know, maybe green with a yellow stripe or some other color. And in a standard setup, you know, good old Marshall setups and fender amps and so on, the center tap will be grounded. So let's follow this wire or this line here on the schematic, right? Jump, jump through 
and it's connected to this big guy here. This is the chassis ground of the amp, right? So it's a grounded heater supply. That's kind of, you know, the most basic heater supply. Let's talk about elevated DC heaters. So heater elevation, as it's often called, or elevated heaters, is a bit confusing, right? And um, it's because you're mixing AC heaters with DC. You're mixing the two together, right? So with elevated DC heaters, you still have an AC 6.3 volt, either 50 hertz or 60 hertz, depending on what part of the world you're in. It's at the same frequency as the wall voltage, right? Um, you still, you've still got an AC heater, but you're elevating it, rather than setting it to ground, the center tap, what you do is you set the center tap to a reference DC voltage that's above ground. Normally about 60 volts, 65 volts around there. You can go higher, you can go lower. But by elevating it away from ground, it makes a huge difference to the noise floor in the amp. Right? It's the most common technique that you can, you can try if you've got heater hum in your amp, right? You know, and you've looked at your lead dress and your, you know, your, your heater wires are well away from your signal wires. Um, DC elevated heaters makes a huge difference and I do it on every amp that I build. I would not do it without it. And by way of example, I want to show you a standard schematic that I have. This is one of the, this is my schematic for the uh, the supply nodes for my Marshall sort of ST1 style project board, right? So you can build a Plexi or a JCM 2203-2204-800 style amp with this board. And here's our kind of standard um, supply line here, right? So this is the power transformer here, rectifier section. This is the mains, filter caps, choke, the screen, filter caps. And I always include this, right? So what you got here, is a very simple voltage divider, two resistors, 560K and 82K, All right? Coming off the screen supply node, so this screen supply node is probably 450 volts DC, give or take. And through the voltage divider here, what you end up, what you set up is a, is a DC reference here that's about 65 volts DC. And then a 16 microfarad cap here is a smoothing cap, right, to make sure that that DC supply is as ripple free as you can get it. Right? So what you don't want to do with elevated DC heaters is set your center tap of your heater supply to a DC reference that's got ripple in it. Because if you do that, you'll make it worse, right? You're better off just setting it to ground, um, but way better. And if you look at my board, this is the, um, uh, layout for the ST1 style project board. Um, this is what I have here, right? So this is my little, um, let's move this across here. Here's our main supply caps, our screen supply caps. This is the phase inverter supply cap. And here I've got my EVH, just conveniently named EVH, elevated heater, um, which is the voltage divider and the and the filter cap, and I run it up here. So you've got a pad here that you can connect the center tap of your heater supply to. So you get elevated elevated heaters for free um, if you're using one of my boards. You can implement this on a little you know um, a little standalone uh, I you know an eyelet board or whatever. So let's recap on what we've covered so far, right? So the top here, this is a normal 6.3 volt AC heater supply with the center tap grounded. Then we spoke about DC elevated AC, right? So you've still got an AC heater supply here. So 6.3 volts at 50 or 60 Hertz going to your preamp tubes and power amp tubes for that matter. Here we've got the center tap at an elevated DC reference, right? So we talked about that. Here's a pinout for your 12AX7. And what I wanted to show here, are the basic elements. Now we talk about how inside each 12AX7, there's two gain stages, right? Right, or two triodes, cathode, grid, plate. 
right? Other side, cathode grid plate. Here's our heater filament, right? Remember we talked about pins four and five and nine. So to wire up uh, your AC heaters like this, you bridge four and five together, and that goes to one side of the tap, and the other side goes to nine. You can kind of see it again here, right? Here, here it is drawn out in a more of a kind of schematic uh, format, where nine goes to one side and four and five are bridged. And you can see here, right? And you can see it on how it's drawn here, that our heater wire goes to each side. So each triode has its own heater element, if you like. Now with 12 volt DC heaters, we're getting rid of the AC waveform altogether, right? So it's just gonna be a nice, steady, flat DC. And pin number nine is not connected because what we do is we put a 12 volt, you know, 12.6 volt, right? 12.0 volts is fine, which is what we actually do with 12 volt heaters. You put a 12 volt DC reference across here, right? So imagine this is 12 volts, this is ground. And your heater wire will split it. So you get six volts. It's like a voltage divider. You get six volts being applied to either side. You don't need to connect pin number nine, right? So this is why when you look at how DC heaters are implemented, you'll notice that only pins four and five are connected and pin nine is sitting there with nothing to do. Just a quick shout out, these diagrams came from the Valve Wizard website. If you haven't checked this out yet, go and do it. There's so much great information there. So if we just go to the actual uh, DC heater board that I'm using um, to mod this amp, this is, this is the layout here, right? So um, in reference to this, I'll actually go back to the schematic and I'll zoom this in. Okay, this is the high level scheme for the DC heater board that I've used um, to implement 12 volt DC heaters in this amp and this board is available um, on our website. Okay, this is the bridge rectifier here. So we're feeding in AC. So in, you know, in my implementation here in this 2203, I had a 15 volt AC supply that came from uh, the power transformer. As I mentioned, you can use um, a standalone uh, small transformer for that purpose, as long as it's about two amps. Out of this, we're getting rectified AC, and we've got to use a, a smoothing cap here. You need 2200, a 2200 microfarad at least, right? You try 1000 in here, I've tried it, it doesn't work. It needs to be at least 2.2. Um, these 100 nanofarad caps here are just additional filter um, smoothing caps for your for the DC supply. And this is where the magic happens. This is your voltage regulator, 7812, uh, it will give you 12 volts. It needs to be connected to that heat sink. It gets very hot. Um, filter caps here, and then out of here you get, this is the VCC, right, or the 12 volt supply. And if I go back to the very simple PCB layout, you can see how the scheme is implemented in physical form. So, your AC comes in here. This is the 15 volt AC line and it makes its way up here. This is the bridge rectifier. I'm using a GRU8 style rectifier there so it's all self-contained. The alternative to that is to use four separate diodes, which you can, which you can do, right? But these are really you know, space saving and convenient. Here's our 2200 microfarad or 4700 microfarad um, smoothing cap voltage regulator here comes into one side, the middle pin's grounded, out the side as you get your 12 volts, more smoothing and then out, right? So here is where you run your 12 volt heaters from this 12 volt line here and then make sure this is grounded to the chassis. <laughs> this thing, right, this was built, well, assembled and painted and relicked. Um, by my good mate Gary, who is here in Melbourne, and for any uh, of you guys that um, are members of our DIY builders group on Facebook, where there's a community of DIY amp builders that are using you know, the headfirst PCBs, and but we you know talk about Marshalls and all kinds of stuff in that group. Um, 
Gary is Eddie Halen, right? Um, for those of you who don't know Gary. So Gary is, look, he's a bit of a genius builder, right? Um, I've seen some of the amps that he's built uh, over many years, right? Way before I got into it. And um, he's given me a bunch of tips and advice along the journey. So yeah, thanks for your th- thanks for your help today, Gary. Um, there's, I always say there's nothing that Gary can't build. He has built this, let's call it a tribute Charvel. Um, he got the parts in from the US. I believe this is a, um, a KNE uh, body. I'm not sure about where the neck came from. So Gary, please forgive me. Um, I'll post comments in the YouTube video afterwards to clarify that, but it's a killer neck. Gary winds his own pickups as well. Um, and these are a ceramic magnet. This is about a 12K in the bridge here. And I think this is about an eight and a half or a nine K um, in the neck position. He's aged um, the hardware on here. This is an original uh, Kramer issued Floyd Rose from the eighties, right? It's very hard to get. It's not a, it's not a reissue or even standalone Floyd Rose. It was only available at the time on the Kramer guitars. And he's done a nitro paint job on this and beautifully relicked it. I'm trying to get some decent shots to post them in the video. So yeah, Kelly guitar. I want to keep it. I won't be able to, but yeah. All right, guys, this is a 2203X reissue. It needs its power transformer replaced, right? There's a short in the bias wind and uh, unfortunately, uh, when you power this thing up, the transformer, it I can smell it, right? It's got that electrical smell. So the whole transformer is going to come out. It's going to be replaced with one of these. All right, now this is uh, a Haber, uh 100 watt PT. And um, this is the 8024HFS, right? Which is the... Um, Amp Parts Direct Custom Haber um, PTs, right? It's a standard 100 watt Marshall, but the beauty of this power transformer, it's got a 14 volt uh, AC wind, or maybe a 15 volt, but needless to say that this thing here can power 12 volt DC heaters, right? This is my little DC heater board. It's perfectly spaced for the Marshall ST1 board by design. So when this thing is down like that, I'm going to hang this off the end of the standoffs um, with the setup here for 12 volt heaters. It also sets the amp up for future mods, right? If, uh, if this thing's gonna have relays and so on put in it for switching. I don't plan to do that today. I don't plan to do it any time in the future, but who knows, right? So getting the 12 volt heaters in here, we will supply um, heaters to V1, 12 volt heaters to V1, V2. I might go V3 as well. Right, so the other thing you might have noticed here is there's no loop board, right? So in these 2203X reissues, 1987X reissues, Marshall put in their 30 volt DC loop and it runs off normally what you'd see here is a massive 10 watt um, it's a 47k resistor coming off the screen supply node they're awful loops especially in a, in a high gain setup right the same has been modded for high gain um, the massive tone suckers um, in a separate video I am going to put in one of our high voltage um, metro style effects loops so keep an eye out for that um, but for the meantime it's come out I'm going to run the amp without it while we uh, get this PT and DC heaters in place <laughs>
So just with the DC heaters, guys, right, this PT had the 15-volt AC wind built into it, which is awesome, right, because you can just, you know, it's all self-contained and you can get what you need straight out of one power transformer. Often you'll be adding DC heaters like this to an amp. It doesn't have that, right? So what you do is you just get a little 2-amp, um, say, 15-volt AC uh, power transformer. They're not very big. You can put them inside your chassis, right? Typically, you'd mount it into the wall or underneath the chassis. Um, as last resort, you can put it on top of the chassis, of course, next to the existing power transformer. That's a very common technique, right? Just get a little 2-amp supply um, PT. You want an AC wind that's a few volts higher than 12, right? So about 15 volts to 20 um, is what I would recommend. So we're ready to power this up. All right, I am going to test that. Here's my, here's my um, low voltage, high current wind, which I'm going to use for all right, my DC heater board, which is, as I said before, is gonna sit up here. It's gonna be elevated above the PCB, the main PCB, so there's no risk of it touching. Um, but before I wire that in, um, I'm I'm far enough with this putting the PT in that I could actually test it. All right, so um, it's all kind of back in, right? The good thing with the um, the this replacement PT is all the color coding on the wires basically the same as the original Drake uh, power transformer. So that's really cool. Um, I've got it wired in at uh, 240. Okay, so um, this old Marshall selector switch has got 110, 220, 230. But this uh, this Haber, um PT actually has a 240 wind, so I'm set that the violet um, tap here on the primary of the power transformer is 240. Okay. Um, Right, so I'm going to bring it up really gently on my Variac, okay? So um, I'm not just going to hit this with 240 volts and hope for the best. We're going to bring it up nice and slow. I'm going to tape these off um, so there's no danger of them touching. Um, and we'll bring it up bring it up very slowly. I'll t take some voltage readings, make sure it's all good. And on the basis that everything's looking okay, we'll progress on to doing the DC heaters. Okay, so I've brought this up gently. Everything's checked out great, right? So I'm really happy. Um, I use the Variac, right? Start on zero volts with the amp in standby, so just power on. Very first thing I checked was just the bias voltage here in AC, right? This is the AC bias wind. And I look to see that it's proportional to what I should get on a scale of, you know, zero to 240 volts, right? So in other words, if I've got the AC voltage coming in, to the amp at a quarter of 240 then I should get a quarter of the maximum voltage on this bias wind right so 95 volt AC and just check right so if, if these things are operating in you know proportionally you know that you've got the AC primary on your power transformer wired correctly all right here's the DC heater board all made up okay I did mention right these mount on these ST1 boards right this was actually kind of designed more for the vintage boards where the um, the rectifier section is a little bit further over and the edge of the board there's just nothing there right so they sit on top of there without too much drama I've been thinking about this and I don't like the fact that that's too close to the rectifier section on this type of ST1 board. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mount it on the wall of the chassis over here. Drill a couple of holes and we're away. Let's do it. <laughs> Ooh. 
Just a quick checkpoint, the DC header board's in on the side wall of the chassis here. Um, everything's wired in. You've got to ground it, right? So this thing operating off this AC wind, it ne absolutely needs to be grounded. So I've just tapped a ground here onto this uh, ground lug on the can cap here, which is connected to the ground. This is the same ground here, actually, that the bias tap is connected to so just the chassis ground away from the preamp perfect spot um, and I've got a twisted uh, red and black wires here which are my 12 volt and I've run it under kind of you know along the edge of the chassis there underneath all these other wires and here it is here ready to go now I have powered the amp up again I used my variac I just came up very gently and checked that um, my DC voltage here and I'm getting 12 volts which is great now the last thing I need to do get this going I'm going to convert these to DC heaters I've already mentioned that right black wire back over here break the connection here same here same here I'm going to put the phase inverter on the DC uh, heaters as well why not <laughs> So I've got the amp fired up, I'm running at 240 volts on the mains, so I've got the Variac bulb right up and what I've got here is I'm measuring DC voltage on the heaters, right? So I've got the phase inverter V2 and V1 running off the board um, and we've got a pretty solid 12 volts here. If I go to AC, you see there's no detected ripple in that signal. All right. This is running this is measuring to three decimal places, no ripple detected at all, which is a good sign. All right, it's a pretty solid there. 12 volts. The heatsink quite warm. All right, um, I've used a shorter one here. I do have a, a longer heat sink, which is the standard one that I use in my amp builds when I'm running, you know, four or up to five um, DC heaters. So, um, and I'll show you what that looks like. That's that big, All right? So. I put the shorter one on thinking, you know, I'll do V1, V2. Now, I did end up doing the phase inverter as well. So that'll be just one thing that I'll monitor, right? So before we end the video, um, I'll give you an update on whether that heat sink there is okay. And so far, it's holding, right? No problem. Because the voltage regulator, right, it'll actually shut down um, if the temperature gets too high. So well, I can touch it. I mean, it's warm, but it's not too hot that I can't touch it. You know, it's, it's pretty hot to touch. Um, if we find that we go into thermal shutdown, we'll swap the heatsink out. Final update here at the bench, guys. I've changed the heatsink out. Okay, so per what I was just saying, look, the smaller heatsink, 
it's kind of it was holding right. It, it, it never shut off, but it was just a bit too hot for my liking. And now I've got the clearance right because when I was thinking of mounting it here, I was a bit worried about the clearance height. Obviously, mounting this on the sidewall is fantastic, right? Because you, you can, you know, no worries about the height, the height of the heat sink. So this will be fine now. I've, I've used this heat sink to uh, run up to five uh, DC heaters, like the MTL build, right? It has five preamp tubes, and I run the whole lot uh, as DC heaters with this heat sink. So three here will be. A walk in the park. Um, I've put the amp on the scope. It's all checking out. Everything is great. Um, much higher plate voltage now. All right, so this PT um, is has got a 350 volt AC high voltage secondary, right? And with a bridge rectifier, you're going to get well over 490 volts on the plate. So I've got... 495 plate voltage on this puppy now and I think before it's probably more like 450 460 somewhere around there so she's cooking uh, I'm keen to hear how this thing sounds <laughs> That's it for today guys i hope you liked the video if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do um ring the bell you'll be notified of new content and i'll see you next time